One of the things I love about hosting this podcast, Decoding the Conflict Mindset, is the array, the talent, the experience of my guest speakers. Well, that's no different than our speaker for today, Sylvia Mayer from Houston, Texas, lawyer, mediator, arbitrator, extraordinaire, brings to us a whole new way of looking at connecting through mediation using her ABC formula. Well, what is the ABC formula? Well, you'll have to listen and learn because she goes into it and provides three great stories for how she has used the ABC formula to help people shift, connect, open up, and reach the path to resolution. Fascinating dialogue, rich with experience, a mindset that truly has been successful in helping people navigate through their conflicts. So you have to listen and learn. What else? Here she is, Sylvia Mayer, with Dr. Deborah Dupree, The Mindset Doc. So delighted to have you today, Sylvia. Thank you so much for having me, Deborah. I'm really excited to join you. Great, great. Because, you know, as I've gotten to know Sylvia uh, through our online experiences and uh, getting to know more about her background, I was intrigued by the ABCs to connecting and mediation. And uh, Sylvia, you've described yourself as an analyst, a bartender, a chameleon in your specialty of law. And so I'm going to ask you just to start right there and say more about that. Absolutely. So I always tell people that um, when I'm working as a mediator, that the three primary skills I draw on are my ability to be an analyst, a bartender, and a chameleon. And um, we could certainly discuss each of those in greater depth, but basically the analyst means that a big part of serving as a mediator is analyzing. Uh, I'm analyzing facts, I'm analyzing law, and I'm analyzing people. And as bartender, I'm listening because a huge part of mediation is empathic listening, uh, but also listening beyond sharing empathy. And then chameleon refers to the fact that you really have to uh, be flexible and be able to change your approach uh, for each case, for each party, for each room, and perhaps even throughout the day. So yeah, always sort of shifting. And um, I, I like how you use the analogy of the bartender and always listening. And, um, you know, one of the things I like to share when I'm working with people is that to listen, we first have to be silent, not just what's coming out of our mouth, but also what's going on in our brain to give someone our, our full attention. And bartenders do that quite well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Sylvia, just so our listeners and viewers know, comes to us with 30 years of experience um, in federal court, state court, bankruptcy court, and the American Arbitration Association. And I'm delighted I just joined the mediation panel for it in AAA. So we've got that connection, too. And, um, you know, you've really worked in lots of different industries, too, from what I can see. Um, banking, energy, construction, finance, healthcare, hospitality. I mean, I could go on. And so I'd like to ask you, you know, if you could identify two or three things that, you know, from your, your breadth of experience over the last 30 years, you know, what would be two or three examples of, of what you most enjoyed and how you applied your ABCs? Oh, that is such a great question. You know, when I'm wearing my mediator hat, um, I think the, the situations that have really been the most powerful, uh, that have stayed with me for a long time, are the cases where I can help someone work through the emotional issues they have to find their path to resolution. And so I'll give you an example. Um, this it was a really... Uh, to be honest, on its face, a simple personal injury car accident case. A lady was driving a car, somebody hit her, she was injured, her car was damaged. But what it really was, was a really tragic story about a woman who had a horrible week in her life. And if, if I, and this was several years ago, so I may not remember the facts exactly right, but as I recall, within a week, she, her, she was diagnosed with cancer her husband died and she was in this car accident. Her car was totaled and she was injured. 
And she was so overwhelmed, understandably, with each of those three things, but all of those three things having happened in the week, that it was really hard for her to navigate the process with the insurance company to deal with the car accident claim. And just so happened that um, the insurance agent uh, who was assigned to her uh, was not the most sympathetic or empathetic individual. And it made the situation much worse. So by the time we came to the mediation, she was carrying a tremendous amount of pain, anger, anguish around how she had been treated, but that also had become the place that she had stored so much of the grief of what she had experienced and all that had happened. And so I really had to draw on all three of the ABCs for this dispute because you know, I, I needed to uh, obviously analyze and understand the facts and the law, um, but also analyze the situation, read the room. Uh, but what she desperately needed was an empathic listener. She needed that bartender. Um, and she really needed a chameleon because she needed someone who could help her move past, you need to be heard, to you need to have closure and let's put this behind you. And I was very fortunate because the attorney who represented the insurance company understood, as I shared with her, what was going on and recognized that perhaps the thing that was going to get us to settlement was a heartfelt apology, not just a words, but a heartfelt apology. And this was pre-COVID. So with everyone's consent, we had a, a session and the attorney for the insurance adjuster for the insurance company um, gave her a hug and said, I'm so incredibly sorry for your loss, for your experience, for all of this. And we are here to make this right. And we settled like 30 minutes later. Wow. And it was, it's really probably, and I mean, this is a half day, not big dollar, but it's one that has stuck with me forever because truly the experience changed this woman's life. Yeah. You know, I, I love that story, Sylvia, because you just touched on so many things, not just your ABCs, but um, while you were talking, I was jotting down a couple of notes that I'd love to share that follow along with that. Um, you know, you, you use the you know word empathy and, you know, it's got to be genuine. It's got to be compassionate. You know, we're all human beings. And I think we forget sometimes, uh, you know, that, you know, we, we, we have emotions and before any cognitions we're preceded with emotions. And uh, I may not say this exactly right, but uh, Stephen Sotomayor, who's up in Northern California, a lawyer and psychologist, uh, has said, and it's often quoted by um, our friend Harold Coleman, you know, for every case, there's a legal or a factual case, but there's also the emotional case. And unless you address the emotional case, you may never get to settling the facts of the legal case. Absolutely. I think that is that is exactly on point. Um, and if you'd like, I can share with you another example. Of that. So a lot of what I do as a mediator, I frequently mediate very complicated multi-party disputes, oftentimes in bankruptcy or related to bankruptcy. A couple of years ago, I had an out-of-court restructuring. So there was no bankruptcy yet, but if we couldn't settle, there was going to be a bankruptcy. And it involved an individual and I think seven or eight different creditors. And we had to figure out how all those creditors were going to get paid. And there had been a race to the courthouse. And so different people were in different positions. And so there was a lot of fighting between the creditors, but then there's this person. And um, it was really an experience where I had to draw on all of my skills uh, because I had to truly adapt in each room to what the needs were with each party. One party really just wanted to talk about the facts. One party, there was emotion boiling over the top and they needed to be supported as they worked through that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And we worked through, and in the end, um, I think perhaps one of the biggest issues was for the individual who was in the middle of it all and who really had to work through some of the, the shame and the grief that comes with, I'm not the place that I thought I was going to be financially. I have to come to terms with this. I have to find a path. I have to let some things go. I have to figure out the way to solve it. And we were able to work out an out of court deal 
um, that kept him out of bankruptcy and um, worked out a, a plan to pay the creditors. And at the end, and his, his wife participated too, and at the end, they were so heartfelt in their appreciation uh, for having had the opportunity to do that. And I really saw throughout the day the trajectory of emotions, you know, and w the working through it. And it really, it's one of those things that sticks with you when you get to watch someone and support someone as they process through these issues and help them get their path to resolution. I always come back to that. The thing that's the most fulfilling as a mediator is to be able to help the parties find their own path to resolution and closure. So well said, so well said. And, you know, that goes back to, you know, um, I know when I'm working with Harold Coleman and we're teaching and speaking and we often talk, talk about, you know, it's really about shifting that mindset uh, from the very get-go. And that doesn't start at the mediation. That starts in the pre-mediation contact uh, and interviews. And uh, I, I love this quote from Harold. Um, Ask before I tell, listen before I speak. You know, and so um, you know, as a as a mediator, like you said, you know, you're the chameleon. You're you're you're, you're continually shifting, um, working to shift the mindset of the participants as they learn, uncover, hear, digest um, more information. And it's not just the facts of the case. Um, I just did a mediation uh, last week with two employees, uh, and. It's been going on. They've been an impasse for eight months, and it was now it was you know impacting the delivery of services. It was in a law enforcement agency, and um, you know during the course of the mediation, they learned facts around the situation that neither one of them knew before, and so they had a lot of bias and attitude about the other person based on their perspective, and um, without uh, uh, it had had grown very positional, and so that's where you know um, you know you really do need to listen and you need to um, uh, ask questions before we get there. And so as a, a mediator, again, it's that chameleon of always uh, uh, listening and shifting throughout the day. And uh, uh, well, it's, it's the ABCs. And as you've already said, it, the analyst, the bartender, the chameleon. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I know I did ask you for one more example. So do you have another to throw out there? Because we learn through stories. We learn through sure. stories. I agree. I think stories are one of the best ways to learn. Um, so yeah, let me give you a, diff a, a totally different type of example. I had a mediation a couple of months ago, and I am a firm believer in preparation for mediations. So I ask parties to send me information in advance. And I don't mean the day before, I mean several days in advance. And I read through it all. And then I try to talk to each side prior to actually getting to the mediation. And this was a situation where there was an ongoing business relationship. And it became clear that while they had a dispute that was in litigation and they were fighting over money, that really there was an underlying operational issue that needed to be resolved that would then benefit both of them. And so I ended up having a number of conversations wearing all three of the hats that we've talked about, right? I, I analyzed the facts in the law. I got on the phone with them and I analyzed what they were saying and what they weren't saying and found that there was something going on that they hadn't identified before. I played bartender by listening a lot. And then when we got in the mediation, gave their clients the opportunity, because in this instance, I was talking to the attorneys, gave their clients the opportunity to work through the emotional part so that we could get to the operational stuff. Uh, and I was a chameleon because I constantly had to change which role I'm playing. Am I probing? Am I inquiring? Am I empathic? Am I curious? And, you know, et cetera. And um, so we actually, the last call I had with the, one of the parties the night before the mediation, he said to me, I don't think I've ever had this experience before, but you've effectively already mediated the case before we get to mediation, because really what we're going to mediation to do is to figure out what this looks like, this thing we've now all agreed is what we really want to do, which no one had thought of before. Marvelous. 
And um, so we were then able to negotiate an agreement and it, they, they've been working through their ongoing relationship issues ever since. And so it was very fulfilling and it was a very different uh, way to structure the mediation process. Well, you know, uh, again, what you just said, Sylvia, it sparked a, a couple of thoughts in my mind in that, um, uh, you know, one, as you said, it was sort of a different kind of mediation. And I was, because I, I primarily specialize in, in workplace or employment kinds of things, that um, I always let participants know in pre-mediation that, you know, there are really three sources of conflict, organizationally, systems or processes, and then the people. And most of the conflicts are at the people level, but in this mediation I referenced earlier, you know, just a week ago, it was an organizational issue that started the whole process. And uh, it became this big blow up then in both a personal and a working relationship. And so once we could sort of identify that, we took sort of the sting out of the personal attacks that were going on. And uh, and then we, we focus on... Uh, while there was a, a lot of pain over losing the, the personal friendship that they had, uh, we focused on restoring a functional workplace relationship. And with that kind of goal in mind, um, you know, I said the other may come down the road, but for our purposes today, we're really here to work on the functional relationship so that you can feel healthy and safe um, in your workplace and then do what you need to do to service your communities. And so um, it was a reframing of their thinking and it opened up the doors. It opened up the doors. I think that's such an important point is sometimes our role as a mediator is to help the parties reframe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you find you, you, you use your analysis skills and your bartender skills uh, to sort of figure out what it is, uh, the language that they need to hear it in, uh, the words they need to hear, the format that helps them reframe. You know, you help them flip the script and take something that maybe they thought was unsalvageable and find some way to resolve it. And, and you know, it's, I, I always just come back to, to help them find their path to resolution because that's really what it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's to, to resolve or repair or mend, you know, those broken down systems, relationship, you know, structure, whatever. And, you know, going back to what you said earlier uh, about um, empathy and compassion, uh, I think I shared with you before we got started, I had just finished a session where uh, I had a lot of people in risk management and, and HR and even some, some higher up levels um, in public agencies participating. And uh, the, my co-speaker and I had just experienced a situation a couple of days ago where there is such an attitude on the part of administration towards uh, a, a particular employee that it, it, they become very positional. And, um, and they become, they definitely have bias about who's involved and um, a negative bias about uh, the employee, positive bias about the administrator who supervises this employee. And all they could see was what the administrator could do. And rather than saying, well, you know, how has this person been impacted? How, you know, what's going on for them? Uh, how have they been harmed in some way? And uh, it's, it's with that show of compassion at whatever level you are, whether you're a, a, a lawyer advocate, a mediator, um, a business leader, manager, supervisor, again, we're all human beings. And so we need to keep in mind that human element and, and to connect with them. And just like in your stories, Sylvia, you know, you, you, you helped change the lives of each of the key parties in a way that helped them maintain their, their esteem. Um, you know, their uh, self-identity, but also influence them positively about the process. Yeah. Absolutely. You want them to come away realizing that mediation actually had positive impact on their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, a lot of um, uh, parties, and I'll even say this, the uh, legal professionals involved um, uh, are so focused on the factual or legal aspects of the case that they, they lose sight um, and I certainly have met many you know, lawyers who just, you know, do not like mediation at all. And I said, well, then I, I, I don't think you've had an opportunity to experience a really well-managed mediation. <laughs> and I'm I sure think, you, you know, that. having practiced law for so long, I can say I, I fully understand uh, how advocacy bias uh, becomes an impediment because you are so focused and committed to the advocacy on your client's behalf 
And that's the value of having a mediator who can help you and your client reframe uh, in a way to see perhaps weaknesses in your case, perhaps advantages to resolution, uh, you know, all sorts of things that we can explore as a mediator that really weren't on the table outside of a mediation. And, you know, I will add that I, in addition to being a mediator, I'm also an arbitrator. And, <laughs> okay, and, you know, it's intriguing to me as I was preparing for today's discussion, I was thinking about, well, so do I use these same skills uh, as an arbitrator and frankly, as an attorney? Am I doing all of these things in all three categories? And I think the answer is yes, um, to different degrees in different ways, but certainly, as an arbitrator, I'm obviously uh, analyzing the facts in the law. But I'm, and, you know, I, I, as an arbitrator, am responsible for uh, listening to the witness and assessing credibility. And you know, there, there's a whole level to that where you're analyzing things uh, of what you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're reading. And you certainly have some aspect of bartender, while certainly it's not the same kind of empathic listening you would use in a mediation, you are still there to listen, right? Because it is still the party's opportunity to share their story. You know, we hear so often people talk about, well, I just need my day in court, right? And that's what we as mediators try to give people in a mediation. That's where we use our bartenders to give them their day in court. But we do that too as an arbitrator because it literally is their day in court. It's just their day in a court that's confidential and private, not in front of a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Um, and you know, certainly you are also as an arbitrator, a chameleon in that you are finding the right skill set for each situation. And I do all those same things as a lawyer too. I, I analyze, I listen, and I adapt as I, need, as I go along. Uh, the adaptation is critically important as you learn more information too, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, sometimes you're working with a client when I'm wearing my lawyer hat and new information comes in and I have to adapt by saying, client, now we know something that hurts our situation, or mm -hmm. now we know something that helps our situation. And it changes the way you look at things. And I think one of the advantages of having a background as a mediator and an arbitrator is I've learned to be more flexible in my mindset as an attorney. Great, great. You know, again, a couple of things sparked there is that, um, uh, you know, I think one thing for parties to consider um, is that, you know, are you looking for resolution or are you looking to be right? Yes. They're different, right? And so, if you if you if you absolutely want to prove your point and be right, mediation is not the tool for you. Uh, you're better off going to arbitration or litigation in a court, and um, because mediation is not about proving right right or wrong. And uh, I find I found uh, a lot of lawyer advocates feel that they have to try to convince me as a mediator that their case is better than the other. And it's like, well, that's not the purpose here. That's why I do pre-mediation to, to shape and influence their mindset about the process. Uh, so I can dispel any um, perhaps um, less than ideal uh, attitude advices that people might have. And with that too, you've already said this and I oftentimes will tell parties in mediation that, you know, if anything as a mediator, um, one, my job is to manage a process, but, is really to help you think outside the box, outside the box that you've been in around your, your, your case or your matter. I had a mediation, I can't remember when, several years ago. And um, I remember the one of the parties was very fixated on, it's the principle of the matter. I'm right, they're wrong, it's the principle of the matter. And we kept going on and on. And the more they learned, the more the process, I finally said to them, is it more important to you to be right or to, and I can't remember if this was a mitigate the loss situation or, you know, save the business relationship type of situation, but there was some driver. And when I said that light bulb, and I said, why don't I step outside for a few minutes so you can talk to your counsel and y'all let me know when I can come back. And we settled the case shortly thereafter because the person realized I've spent all day focused on being right, but what's that going to cost me? Yeah. Well, you know, Sylvia, um, 
everyone has a story, right? And then you shared several of your, your, your um, mediation stories, but I'd like to hear your story because I know you have a really interesting background that didn't start off in the field of law. Uh, sure. So, yes, I took somewhat of a meandering path uh, to become a lawyer. <laughs> My undergraduate degree was in theater, and I was a starving artist for three years. I um, worked in advertising. I worked at a bookstore. I was an assistant editor on a documentary. I worked for a number of theater companies. I did um, stage managing and assistant directing and directing and marketing and public relations and development. Like I did, it was really I squeezed a lot into my three years of being a starving artist, um, but the starving word was the operative word there. <laughs> and so after three years, I went on to law school and um, I've been practicing law for just about 30 years now. And I initially went to a large international law firm where I was at for 20 years. I did very big, complex bankruptcy cases and commercial litigation billion dollar disputes. Uh, and it was really an extraordinary experience. And in um, 2014, I took an enormous leap of faith. And I left my uh, law firm of 20 years and said, I'm going to go out on my own and have a solo law and ADR practice. And that's what I've been doing. And it has been really a fantastic journey. I have met so many incredible people. I've had so many amazing opportunities to help parties find path to resolution. And it is so rewarding. I've just loved it. And I continue to practice law some, although at this point, really mediation and arbitration are, are becoming increasingly the primary aspects of my practice. Wonderful. I, I um, You know, we can go down a pathway that we think is right, which is Likewise to what you're talking about, the pathway to resolution in mediation, you know, but we find that, hmm, we're, we're running into obstacles or, or it's not as smooth as we, we wanted. And so it's time to reframe, you know, your life and uh, where you're going and, and how to get there and uh, finding you know, reward and fulfillment in uh, our alternative pathway. And that's really a metaphor for mediation, right? Absolutely. You nailed it. <laughs> well, Sylvia, it's been absolutely delightful to have you here. You really shed so much light on, you know, that connecting in, in mediation and, again, your fantastic use of the ABCs uh, to a pathway for resolution. I like that. Um, and, and, you know, I just encourage our listeners and viewers to spread the word about mediation because it is such a powerful um, process for healing, recovery, moving forward, and um, reaching resolution. Absolutely. I really enjoyed the opportunity to visit with you today. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Sylvia, before we close, though, I do want uh, to ask you, um, how can our viewers and listeners reach out to you and any exciting things coming up uh, your way as we start rolling into a, another year? Absolutely. So the easiest way to find me is you can find me on my website at smarelaw.com or you can find me on LinkedIn. So obviously you can just search for Sylvia Mayer, arbitrator or mediator, but literally it is linkedin.com in Sylvia-Mayer-arbitrator-mediator-attorney. So to be able to find me. Very good. And just to clarify, Mayer is spelled M-A-Y-E-R. Yes, it okay. is. Thank you for that. Yes, you're very welcome. Yeah. Well, thank you listeners and viewers for joining us and uh, hope that you gained a lot about this, whether you're a lawyer, a mediator, a business leader at any walk of life, you know, shifting our mindset about how we approach conflict is huge. And that's why we call this podcast Decoding the Conflict Mindset, so that we can actually embrace conflict in more constructive ways rather than destructive ways for healthier, happier living. So if you like what you heard today, go ahead and subscribe so you hear about next upcoming podcast episodes and uh, tell your friends, share it, share it on social media. Let's get the word out about this wonderful field that still remains not so well known. And we want to make a difference uh, as we move forward into the next year. Thank you again. I'm so excited to tell you about our next guest speaker. So subscribe now to make sure you are alerted to her, when her episode is released. Karen Tibbles joins us, not from a mediator background, not from a lawyer background, but as an expert in consumer behavior. She became the voice of consumers on behalf of 
companies when they were trying to push their marketing ideas, not connecting with the values, what was important to the consumers. And she has gone on to, uh, in the process of writing a book, Persuade, Don't Preach, Restoring Civility Across the Political Divide, which is the name of our episode as well. What better time, given the unrest that we experience? And I really love the fact that she puts out a newsletter called Mending Fractured Relationships. Now, who doesn't need that? So come on back, come to our next episode, be ready to listen to Karen as she enlightens us with the moral foundation theory and how it connects to people.